You're now listening to the Zod and Drea podcast. Again, guys. All right, we're back at the Zod and Drea podcast, coming to you live on December, what is it, Tuesday, December 19th. Yes. So, Christmas is upon us. This Christmas is the last is day that you can say you're oh. celebrating the 19th of this year. Yep, that's it. Of this year, this is the this only is it. time. This is it. So, what are you guys up to? Nothing? All right, we're going to get right into this. <laughs> I love all the responses. <laughs> all the responses. Um, I'm going to tell you certain responses. If you are not a part of the Zod Andrea Think Tank on Facebook, which is a special private group, um, then you are missing out because we get we get it in on some of these really cool discussions that people bring in, and of course uh, questions that we answer over there that also influence our upcoming podcast sometimes. And we just want to thank everybody that volunteered to be part of the Think Tank and that has been getting engaging in these conversations and sharing of ideas. It's been great. Yeah, so we're going to keep on doing that and uh, pushing some of the contact things. One thing we are looking for, we want to definitely expand the website and have people write some articles. Um, we would love to get different perspectives and things that, uh, you know, they're going on in, in the world and that people would be able to report on, whether you got images, um, whether you got especially just articles that you want to write about, um, even reviews. So if you've seen a movie that we don't have on there and you want to review it, you know, write about it, submit it to us, submit like a few photos and, you know, we'll get you up there. And and you'll be able to get some credit. That's what's cool about it is they will get their own byline and credit that will be searchable online. There you go. So reach out to us. Let us know. So we're going to get into this. Um, one of the things we're going to talk about in the entertainment section is Star Wars Episode Eight, which is The Last Jedi. Uh, if you don't know that came in, broke all kinds of records, uh, but not the biggest records, but it, it, it did well in the box office and is doing very well. Yeah. Disney's happy. Yeah. So what's next? And then after that, we are going to... Politics. Discuss politics. And, and of course, we have to talk about the Roy Moore sinking ship that he lost. He lost. And we need to talk about how this was so important to... Uh, okay, all we're going to talk about is Roy Moore versus Doug Jones, the election. So we're going to get into that. Um, <laughs> I know, I'm you guys. Like, I, I take a long time. I'm like, geez, you're already starting the segment. I am. And then we're going to um, talk about the main topic today, which is going to be going broke for the holidays to keep your loved ones interested. Hmm. A lot of people probably wind up doing that, especially this time of year, as well as uh, some of the want? holidays that are going on. So let's uh, discuss why that's stupid. Um, so let's go on. We're gonna, let's just start off with... Um, We'll start off. Let's start off with the Roy Moore, Doug Jones. We'll, we'll start off that with that. So some politics. We'll start off with some politics today. So it was last Tuesday, right? Yeah, I believe that. I think yeah, all the elections are always Tuesday. So last Tuesday, Roy Jones, <laughs> Roy Jones Jr. I Sorry. know, right? No, no, it's Roy Moore. <laughs> <laughs> Roy Moore. <laughs> Y'all must have forgot. <laughs> Roy Moore and Doug Jones. Oh, no. The election in the Alabama for the Senate race for uh, the Weasel seat, uh, the the Keebler Elf seat. Um, what's his name? The Keebler Elf. Oh gosh, uh, Sessions, uh, Jeff, Jeff Sessions. Jeff Sessions. Yeah. He is keeper yeah, up. Yeah. Or on Saturday Night Live, he's also yeah, possum. apostle. <laughs> so Jeff Sessions obviously left that to go work in the Trump administration to fail miserably there. So his seat was um, up for uh, grabs because you know it's empty. So we were going to try to see who was going to eke out this win over in Alabama. Either the pedophile, friggin' child rapist racist clan asshole uh roy moore or the guy who actually fought um in civil rights case against the um clansmen the Mm -hmm. four the four girls who were bombed in the church um and who prosecuted that 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 clansman so who is going to win in alabama here's the issue that we have the issue is the fact that there were that many people willing to vote for this dude like, it was actually a contested event to where the GOP pulled out mm-hmm. and said, you know what, we, we kind of want to distance ourselves away from, you know, Roy Moore because he is a, you know, what was he, he is ban- a scum. <laughs> yeah, he's scum. He shouldn't represent Alabama at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, who would want a pedophile? A guy who in his 30s is out hunting 
to have sex with 14, 15, 16 year olds. Like, think about that. And remember, he was vote. He was not not voted, but he was uh, he broke the law twice and had to be taken off the bench in Alabama. I think that was three times. I think it might have been, th- was it three times or two times? I thought it was two times. It doesn't matter. This dude, like, the fact that he's using Judge Roy Moore is actually a misnomer mm-hmm. because you're, he, you were kicked off, You were man. kicked off for breaking the law. So there were people who were voting for this guy. The GOP backed off. Mitch McConnell backed off. I think um, Ryan backed off. Trump then put his voice behind. So, of course... Only a wo- only a womanizer, you know, pedophile would get the backing of another womanizer, um, misogynistic, misogynistic racist. racist. Of course he's going to. So of course here's Trump sitting there like, oh no, Roy Moore is my dude. We can't have a Democrat, a liberal in into this position. We just can't do it. So he thinks the Trump effect, where the Trump train is going to just come in and take over, because he has so much winning. Yeah, just like last election where he put it in and he lost how many se- like. Man, the, the Democrats and liberals are killing it right now. And, of course, Trump put all his weight behind it. Um, then the GOP came back. Oh, yeah. Then they're like, yeah, okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, you know we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll take this Maybe guy. Maybe we'll do that. They came yeah, back yeah. and He's endorsed so the pedophile. Like, think about this, people. Uh, would you have this guy, Roy Moore, babysitting your children? Mm-mm. Like, all of a sudden, some of these women. But then here's what, here's what happened. Racially, obviously... Um, Doug Jones won. Mm-hmm. First Democrat, I think, in like a de- in a generation, I think 20-something years. Over 20-something years, right. To um, win that seat in Alabama. And it was split. Like, once again, as in the Trump election and so many other elections where, it, where racism and pedophilia doesn't matter to them. Like, doesn't matter to them. And they, and they say they're Christians. They don't care if somebody raped a child. They will still vote for them. As long as they are not liberal, but white people, to the tune of 72% of white men and 63% of white women. We are talking the majority of white people in Alabama, just like in the Trump election, did not care that this man was a rapist. While black people, black men voted 93% and black women 98% for Doug Jones. So they saw the significance of this. Like, I can't vote for a racist pedophile. Right. Like White, white people were like, but I can. I can. <laughs> a man that's been taken off the judge seat twice. But again, the fact is that it was such a close race is still it, scary to me. That's what's scary That about is it. so freaking scary. Like, after all this time, after the craziness of this year, people, you still want to support somebody just because of the party that they're affiliated with and this false narrative they're going to save you and this is that and that's the issue uh, so we're going to have to stay tuned for some of these other elections that are going to be coming up because hopefully the trump effect will wind up having the same issue you know but that's what happens when you have like 32 percent approval rating anyway <laughs> um going all right so let's talk about now about if you haven't seen it um and if you haven't read it, make sure you go to Zydendrea.com so that you can read my assessment of the new Star Wars Episode Eight movie, The Last Jedi. So The Last Jedi. You know, they always have the, you know, you're not sure, you know, the Phantom Menace. Well, what, 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 Who's the Phantom? Who, who is that? Like, I didn't who, know there was a menace. And he was, a, he was so menace. Mm-mm. You know, they, so they, so who's the last Jedi? You know, the Force Awakens, but where? You know, why was who woke up? I didn't why know they, they sleep? Mm-hmm. So here they go again. You know, you're not sure who the last Jedi is. And it was really good. I really liked it. And it split between the the hardcore fans and the critics. Look, I consider myself a hardcore fan, right? I do. And I enjoyed this movie very much. I had a great time. I, I thought that the mixture of the storytelling with a little bit of humor and some of the classic characters. I won't give spoilers away, but there were some classic characters that came out that just really made this very entertaining and i can't wait to see what the next one's gonna be because i couldn't what, say that about some of the other ones because with the force awakens what we did was we should have watched it before but we watched it after but it was still fresh in our head so what we did was we went to see the movie and then we came back home the next day and then we watched the force awakens just to see if we had missed and there were things that we missed yeah you know there were things that you know we're talking about a two-year gap so you know, in between that two year, they make sure that they fill in those gaps because they had uh, Rogue, Rogue One, One in mm-hmm. between that. So you, it's not like you 
missed out, but you felt like you missed this particular story in this particular galaxy um, in Star Wars. And what some of the uh, fans were like, oh, you know, they, they were feeling that some of their nostalgia, I think, was being threatened. Um, you know, they had some questions that weren't answered. And, and it's funny for some people who wind up saying that because you have nine frigging, or, or, or I should say seven other episodes you can go to. It's like, you know, this is a waiting right. game. You know, there were some people who waited for the last three, you know, for decades almost damn near. I mean, you know, it wasn't really worth it. But, you know, with this, the way that they've done it, is, yeah, there's going to be a couple cheesy parts and this and that, and they got some jokes, whatever, but, you know, it is Luke Skywalker coming back. It is Rey discovering, you know, what is in her and if she has, you know, how much of the Force she mm-hmm. has as was shown in The Force Awakens. It's about the conflict, millennial conflict of, uh, you know, um, what's his name? Kylo Ren, a.k.a. Ben, a uh, Ben Solo. Um, Did you say millennial conflict? Yeah. Like, would it in, in a future, in a galaxy far, far away, he's a millennial? He's a future, he's a future millennial. <laughs> you know he's he is. His to- avocado toast. <laughs> you know, he is. He's a hipster. In a black outfit. Of course. With he, a helmet. <laughs> you know, what does Snoke fit into all of this um, mm-hmm. and his influence and, uh, like, Ben's conflict? I mean, the one thing is he has a conflict inside of himself. And this is nothing that we're giving away. It's the fact that we went back to see Episode 7, The Force Awakens, where we were like, oh, okay, this is what this relates to this. Mm -hmm. This is why this relates to this. But, I mean, if you want to talk about the power of women in this film, once again, once again, you know, I mean, how how they were going was it's It was such a great story to see how her character evolved to be this awesome leader. And then she had some of her protégés there, too, that took on some of the reins. And it, you just got to see how the mansplaining really kind of went to the side. And you, you just you just saw some really great leadership come out. And that, I thought it was a great storyline. And to all the hardcore fans, look, remember, think about this. How many times, okay, like say, for instance, with Empire Strikes Back, you were left with questions, but did you complain about it? No. Oh, they waited until Return you of the were Jedi. You waited to Return of the Jedi because you knew that your questions would be answered. So that's, I feel it's the same type of formula. You're not going to get all your answers right now. They want to leave you guessing and questioning because that's what's going to drive you to see the next movie. Hey, people forget that this is an epic, it's a, it's, it's a saga. And mm-hmm. that's what they got. They have the Star Wars saga. It's going to keep going on. Just chill out, people. It's a Greek tragedy. There's always going to be new characters popping in and out. You know, but geez, just for one um, run for the uh, weekend, I mean, last year I got about $220 million domestically. Foreign, it got 230 We are talking a $450 million haul over a weekend. Does that cover their expenses, though? That's ridiculous. But so does we're gonna it cover their happens. expenses? It better. <laughs> it better because, you know, getting Luke was worth at least 300 mil. <laughs> well, it was good. Go see it. Please listen carefully. Please listen carefully. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Zod. And I'm Drea. And we want you to check out the Zod and Drea podcast every Tuesday. Where can everybody find us at? Hmm. You can always check us out on www.zodandrea.com. Where else? You can always check us out also on Facebook at Zod Andrea. Instagram? Zod Andrea. Snapchat? Zod and Drea. YouTube. Zod and Drea. I see a pattern. I see a pattern. <laughs> so if you haven't caught that, catch us at Zod and Drea on all the social networks. But also make sure you subscribe to the Zod and Drea podcast. Where? At ZodandDrea.com. And also on YouTube and iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. We're coming for you. Let us know what you think. And if you want to be a guest, reach out to us. And put all of your input into whatever our topics are for the week, please. So we hope to check you out and see you there. Bye. All right, we're back to discuss what what people going broke for the holidays to keep your loved ones interested. All right, so let me talk first real quick. Here's one thing I've never understood. Like, I never have a lot of money all the damn time, you know? Sometimes you can you have it, sometimes you don't. Just like anybody else, you know, unless you're part of the 1% and, you know, or you just stash a whole bunch of things away. You think way far ahead, maybe in March. It's like, oh my God, look at this. I would love to get this person something for Christmas. You get it, you wrap it up, throw it in the closet, forget about it, wipe off the dust when December comes and you throw it under a tree. No, that's not me. I'll get it when I get it. And it's like, okay, cool, here, this is for you. But some people, it seems, expect. It's the expectation, but they expect things to get it on that day. Mm-hmm. And they get upset about it. 
Like if they don't get it. If they don't, it's bad enough if they don't get it. Sometimes they get things that they get and they're still not happy. Like, like, yo, did I not just give you something for free and mm-hmm. you're complaining? Mm-hmm. But there are people who will, you know, they don't want to have that disappointment in somebody else's face, and I think that's what it is that drives them, and that disappointment kills them to where they're like, you know what, I may not have it, but I'll just max out my credit card today mm-hmm. just so they can be happy tomorrow. I'll take a, what do you call those? Those, uh, I knew a girl that she had to take out, what do you call those loans off your car? Oh, a title loan? A title loan. So this way she could get something for her guy for Christmas. And it's like, it costs so much money. It's not, why is that worth it to people? I don't know what expectations are set in the beginning. Maybe it was your, your view of what relationships were when you were a kid, of what's important. You know, did your mom always get what she wanted? Did your dad always like like go broke, bust his ass so his wife wouldn't get upset if she didn't get something like like that one diamond ring or those one earrings? I I don't know. Like those expectations had to been set somehow. I do blame the the uh, the um jewelers, and I blame um what else is it? Oh, like uh, Zales or Oh, Jared. my gosh. This is I was their about, season. This is their season mm-hmm. for, oh, you know, the heart pendant. You know, then, then it only costs you 990 It's like, first of all, why would you want that crap? Mm-hmm. You know, it's probably like low-grade diamonds and shit, you know, scratched up and yellow. And, you know, you're just paying for absolutely no reason for what. But and it's funny you say that because, to me, it also extends to things like wedding rings. Yeah. You know, it also extends to an expectation that people have, not just during the holidays, but during occasions, during events. It's like, well, you know, for this event, you're supposed to have a three-carat diamond. And I think a lot of that, to me, to me personally, is that people want something to show off to someone else. Mm-hmm. It's almost like to make them jealous. Well, what did you get? Oh, I got this. Well, my, my woman oh, or my yeah. man bought, yeah, bought yeah, this yeah. for, you know what I mean? Like, oh, well, look at, oh, what a rock. Yeah, he did it. Yeah, he went broke to get that for you. And you... Didn't it's not even that you had the nerve to say, "Oh my God, babe, you know, let's take this back and get something more reason. Put that money towards mm-hmm. a hot, dope vacation, or put that towards a down payment on a house or something that's going to have a little longevity." No, look what he got from me. So that you know, it's like, eh, dude, like, is that what you want to get with? Is is that your relationship goals? Mm-hmm. Well, and I don't know, but am I going to lie that I'm not going to lie? I got the gifts. You know, I dated no, before no, where I got, got like, nothing wrong with that. I got the jewelry, I got the rings, I got, you know, the necklaces. Were they something I liked? Sometimes no. And I remember I was dating somebody and, and that was his thing was he would get me jewelry. And I swear the jewelry taste he had was awful. It was so awful. <laughs> and I remember the first time he got me something, I asked if I could take it in exchange for something that wasn't so heavy you know i was trying to think of the nicest way to say like this is so gaudy and ugly and i would never wear this because i'm really picky with my jewelry i have to admit but i didn't want to you know crap on his 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 thoughtfulness and he took it very hard he was like oh you don't like what i got you i'll never buy you anything and i was like no it's not that it's like (laughs) if it's something that it's gonna be jewelry then i'd like to you know wear if it all the time if it's something you gave me but it has to be something i can wear all the time i can't wear something that looks like I'm going to a quinceanera. You know, it's like, it's really, it, it can, it's like this, this juggling act and that got to be stressful. So then during the holidays or during like even Valentine's day, I would get stressed out. Like, man, you know, what, what if it's something that's going to look horrible and I'm going to be stuck with this thing? Like it was so much because he couldn't take the, 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 the comment or the request uh, yeah. for me to be there with him. If you're going to choose an item, let me be there at least. But I know there was a lot of girls that would not, would love the situation I was in, but it just wasn't me. <laughs> it's like each one that I dated, it's like I, I specifically told, you know, they would always ask, what do I want? I'm like, okay, look, like, I, of course I have things I like that I want, but I always want to earn it myself. Mm-hmm. Or let me get it myself. But I am very appreciative when they do get it, but I make sure that when I do have it or something, something that, if, if it's something that I want, it's something that I use. It's not just because, or if it is something that I'm just going to use, such as, uh, or, or, you know, such as a Mm t-shirt, like a Black Panther t-shirt or something. It's like, cool. I wear, and then I'll rock that t-shirt, you know, or the Hulk t-shirt. I will rock that t-shirt and I appreciate the gift, but it's also a gift that only costs like 12 bucks. You know, I make sure of that. 
Whereas if it's something more expensive and someone like let's say bought me a freaking camera um, or a lens that I want, you best believe that my goal in life would be to make money off of that lens to make sure that I make the money back that was paid for it and that benefited us, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, so I get things that are more practical if they wind up getting instead of, oh, I just want this just to be wanting it. Yeah. Like, I'm not just the type to of, show it. Just to show it. I'm not the type mm -hmm. of, like me, I don't buy Jordans. I'm not the guy that says, I'm mean, sure if someone got me some, I'd appreciate it, but that's just not my style. I don't, that's just not me. You know, oh, Brent, I just paid $300 for these friggin' sneakers. It's like, I'd look at you like, why? <laughs> like, for what? Like, I can buy a bunch of like Reebok classics. I can buy like six Reebok classics for that. Or, or you know, I can buy some Brooks and the like white ones. And you know it, mm -hmm. white on white. I, I got to go get some new ones. I love the white on. I don't give a <laughs> So, like, you know, get me that. Um, cause I will rock them. I will wear them. I'll match my outfits and then, and it's all love. And I will wear the shit out of them until they fall apart. And then I'm like, okay, I can get some new ones or get some clothes that fit. There's something that I'll do, but I'll make sure I'll photograph myself in those mm -hmm. clothes with you so that, you know, it's a pride thing for me. But for someone to go broke in that, like, oh, I want some $500 jeans for what? Right. Yeah, like, I knew guys that would stress out so much, like, if I didn't get this from my girl, she will leave me. <laughs> leave me. Like, Jeez. what the hell? What, what has gone on that, that this woman or women have put so much pressure on the guy to go broke? Like, like okay, great. He's going to go broke to get you this, this Michael Kors purse or whatever that is so expensive and in style at the time. But next week he can't take you to dinner because he broke, <laughs> or he's got, or you won't see him for a month because because got to work two jobs now to cover that bill. So now you lost your boyfriend for a month. Like again, but if that is weighs out more to have that item versus spending the time, then that means that that's what's more important to you, and that's okay, you know. But if if uh, is it worth the stress all the time? I don't think so. Maybe it's just me, but I just I just don't. No, it doesn't make sense to me. And um, for holidays, it's the same thing. I understand that your kids, you know, oh, my kids need this, this. See, that's who I stress over because <laughs> I want to make sure, like, okay, though I got the, the, the enough for the kids, you know. See, and even me, there are some kids that I really see on um, on Christmas. Like, you'll see some of these pop up. And this is the type, like, we have a kid, like, this is the type, I would love this. Because it's not that they don't deserve, depending on what they did all year, but it's some of the kids I've seen where they're like, oh, mommy, you know, could you donate? They're like little kids. Oh, could instead could we buy um, gifts for like these other kids who don't have any? And oh, could we do this? I'm like, yo, this kid is like five years old saying this and he's serious. And he really like enjoyed just shopping and giving like, like other kids gifts. And he knew the meaning of giving as opposed to always receiving. Right. And see, to me, it's like, okay, you know, having enough for kids, it's like, yeah, sure, I understand that. But do the kids understand why they're getting it, number one? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's like, I don't think that gift giving all the time is something that you should just get just because you exist on this friggin' planet. It's because something either you've deserved to, you made me feel a certain way. Um, your happiness means something or I'm appreciative of mm -hmm. what you have done or accomplished or something you have done to, you know, for me to enjoy your presence, you know? No, well, yeah, that was actually that rule, you know, where they call, I guess, the, the myth of Santa, like, you better do, you know, you better be good because Santa's watching or something. Yeah. That was actually something that my parents growing up that they just instilled in, in us and they actually would give us presents saying, you know, hey, Miha, you did good this year. You did this or you did that. So, can, you know, you, you, you earned this stuff. Not necessarily that it was Santa that said you did it, but it would my, I remember when my dad would tell me, you know, Miha, you deserve this. You did really good this year. You got A's or you got this award or, you know, so then you, I felt good having that Barbie doll house because I earned that house. <laughs> and I like, um, you know, all the items that I had gotten as a kid and everything else, like, point, all right, here's one, um, like, earlier in life, when my parents, like, bought me a computer. Mm -hmm. This is going to sound like real 1% shit that I'm about to say, but, you know, when my parents had bought my first um, Apple, Apple, the Apple IIc, if you ever look it up, you got to see the Apple IIc with the matching monitor and everything else, and I knew that this computer was, like, 3000 bucks. You know, it was expensive back then. And it took, it took a floppy disk and the whole nine yards because they knew that I was interested in artwork and also that I was getting into computers. So they started seeing me with computers. So they bought this for me. Not, 
I think um, it was almost as a hope, you know, like, I don't know, my parents like almost saw the future. It was kind of interesting the way that they did it. But they knew, even back then, I was like, man, I knew that this was an expensive toy. I have to learn on it. So I taught myself how to even draw using it. Um, I think it actually took a mouse, if I think, if I remember right. Um, I think this computer may have. I got to remember. But I've, I mean, after that, they bought me like the Mac Classic and a whole bunch of other Apple Apple stuff um, until I was able to buy some on my own. And I mean, I, they bought me, a, God, probably like eight Macs. I mean, a lot. So that's why you're a Mac guy. Your first computer was a Mac. Yeah. It's like, mm. um, not even, it was, just, it was an Apple. It wasn't even a Mac. <laughs> it was an Apple. That's how old. <laughs> Back in the day. Yeah. I got to show you a picture of the 2C. Um, and I didn't want the, the, I didn't want the 2E. I like the 2C. The 2C it was smooth. Anyway. Um, they wound up getting me all that stuff and I wound up buying my own and, but it's one of those things where nowadays I'm a graphic website designer and I design on Mac. It, 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 it translates, mm-hmm. um, more, more 1% shit. When I was in college, the same thing, my parents were like, Oh, Brent, you know, uh, you know, the phone call I got was, Hey Brent. Yeah. I was about to leave. I was about to go on a bus with a bunch of other students somewhere to King's Dominion in, in uh, college. And, you know, parents called and said, Oh, Brent, uh, we just want to know what uh, Mustang would you want? A, uh, red one or a silver one? I'm like, what? Spoiled brat. Yep. And I'm like, what? Red one is a... Please, just because you didn't have it. I didn't <laughs> have anyway. it. Anyway. <laughs> I had a Geo Metro. Don't, don't, it don't, was don't, the anyway, shit. Don't, don't get it mad was, at me. It was wonderful. Don't get mad at me because I had it. I told you it sound like some 1% <laughs> shit. Don't get mad. You're mad. Um, so, you know, to me, it was like, wow, my parents bought me a, you know, a car, which was cool. But it, was just, it wasn't a buy. It was like a lease. And, but they paid for it for two years. Mm-hmm. It was like real cheap. I like, man, it was like 150-something bucks. I wish. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> but it was really dope. It was my car. And I loved it. And I made sure that even then, like, I kept it. When I turned it in, they were like, yo, have you even used this thing? Like, it was shiny. I always kept it clean. Right. Always you kept appreciated it. it. Appre- because my parents bought this for me. It wasn't something I took for granted. It was something so that I can now move around and get a job. Well, not, I always had a job working, but now this is my car. I don't have to borrow yeah. Doodle's, like, Doodle's car to go to a job anymore. Like, now I had my own where I can go to the Mexican restaurant and make that. I did this, made my own money. I went and traveled back home to my parents because I appreciated the car, and I was able to do that. And, you know, I made sure I didn't put a lot of miles on it. Like, it was an appreciation until the next one I turned it in, then I bought my own car. You but know, then, then those the habits now translate right to you, the cars that you have now. You treat them like yeah, you know, I treat like, them as well as I can. Yeah. And, you know, but it's like for people to go broke during the holidays just to do it in order to satisfy someone else's needs. Just are they going to appreciate? Are, and how do they appreciate right. it? Like you don't think your parents got you those just to get your affection? Like when parents they had do it that, already, right? Right. So it wasn't for that. Where you see now that. Parents or, or, or partners in relationships, the gift is to secure the relationship. So so-and-so likes me. So-and-so will continue to give me love. Or that that child will acknowledge that I'm a great parent or something like that. Like, it's, it's, it's you know, it's another means. And, I mean, I just don't see how other people during these holiday seasons, when they sit there and they, I mean, you see them at the mall, you see them breaking themselves, and you know they don't have it. Mm-hmm. Like you've seen these people, they don't have it. It's like you know, you got all these kids, and you can tell that you're not. Like you look at the car they're getting in, and it's like, come on, man. I'm not, you know, there to judge them, but I don't know. It's a sad time when um, the industries are out there pushing that for people to do. Right, right. And I think that's wrong. Well, you know, as we get older, we know that what what is a value, what monetary value is put on some items. So, like you said, you know, now it's looking at to volunteer. Now it's to look at what else can we do to add to increase the lifestyle versus just that monetary moment. Yeah, and the thing is, on a real, people should be able to just give things out year wide. You know, anyway, that's my that's my just, You know, when when you see it, if it's June, you know, twelfth, then just get them something. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> forget it, whatever, because you felt like it. Anyway, people. Let us know what you think. You know, go to the website, go to Zydendrea.com, go to Facebook.com slash Zydendrea, um, even the YouTube site. You know, give a comment. Let us know what you think about this topic. And also, too, like um, what Zod had mentioned previously about the think tank. You want to be on it? Let us know. Send us your information. Or just go to, <laughs> go. you can actually do a search for it. Search for Zydendrea uh, think tank on <laughs> Facebook. 
and just add yourself, and uh, we will approve of you. We'll probably wind up looking at your webpage just to make sure you're not crazy. But, you know, go ahead and do it. There's, not, there's, there's, there's some crazies out we there. We just want the intellectuals. <laughs> that's why. We want intellectual discussions. But anyway, hopefully we'll see you next week uh, before Christmas hits. All right, people? Oh, it will be Christmas. Actually. That's right. All right. Talk to you then. Peace. Peace.